guys for being here for another edition of From Here to There. Our guest today is Dustin Rydell. And um, Dustin is from Orange County. We met through a group called the Barnabas Group uh, in Orange County. And this is one of those things where the power of networking. Dustin and I, there's no real reason on earth that we should know each other in That's any true. way. Yeah. Except for the fact that we both went to something um, where other people were and we weren't afraid to bump into other people and, and we did that kind of intentionally. So that's a really ineloquent way of saying get out there and network because things happen when you do. Um, 100%. Correct? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So Dustin, um, thank you for being here. My pleasure. What I, what I think I'd like to ask you first is um, you have you were a guest in our in our class with the seniors, and you talked about basically your work day. Can you can you go through your current? What does your work schedule or work day look like right now? Work day. So <sighs> I'll do two days for the price of one. Excellent. And the first day is when I'm at home working out of the home office all day. So wake up at 7.30, brush my teeth, don't eat breakfast, go to the office, catch up on email. I have a, I work out of my home office exclusively there in Starbucks and then I have six remote employees. So we're always on communication via email, IM or phone together. Usually about 10 o'clock I will hit pause, make some eggs, crush some YouTube, big wave videos <laughs> and then go back to work usually late lunch and then go for a bike ride or hit up some yoga after hours on the days that i've got to head out to see clients i dress more like this than i do in my pajamas and usually i try to get up if we're doing like a la or a san diego client i usually try to get there before traffic so i either plan it early or a late day so go up before traffic, come back in the middle of the day. Or if I go up in the middle of the day, just plan on spending the evening at a local restaurant crushing email. OK, so w when I listen to you talk, you've got two different kinds of days. One where you travel out and you're visiting uh, clients and you've got meetings, you're out there doing things. Yes. Second kind of day is when you roll out of bed pretty much when you want to. Yes. Stay in pajamas all day. 100%. Like at 10 AM, you crush some YouTube. Crush it. Crushing. Something. I'm very good at it. Okay, um, and by the mid afternoon, you're you're on your bike somewhere. Uh, and ideally. Uh, ideally, yes, yeah, so or surfing. This I don't know what you guys, but this seems like a great way to live, right? It's not terrible. It's not terrible. So yes, what I want to talk about then is how did you get from here, where yep. these folks are, to there? Was it easy? Was it a straight line? Did you make some mistakes and learn a few things on your way? Excellent. Three questions. You can start with all of them. Whichever one. Excellent. Uh, it was absolutely not a straight line. Um, I knew that I wanted to be rich, but that doesn't narrow it down a lot and doesn't help like guide your path in any way, shape, or form. Um, so. It was always hard work at like when I w first got out of college, my first, my second adult job here in Southern California, I started running numbers and was like, oh my gosh, if I worked an extra two hours a day, then I'll be able to get ahead and I'll be like, instead of doing one year worth of work, I'll do a one and a quarter years worth of work, right? Seems mm -hmm. like a crazy way to think about it if you're a super driven sales guy. And it works a little. But I definitely put in like 10 to 12 hour days for quite a few years there in the middle. I would say that uh, almost regardless of industry, but especially in a lot of sales jobs, the f beginning part is the hardest. So it's not like you see people in middle aged people and you're like, man, they've got it like pretty good, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure it was always pretty good for them, right? It was not always very good for me. I definitely hate 
started a business and failed right out of college. Actually, it was a couple years after college. Then I got into an industry that I hated because it was immoral and terrible. And got out of that after six months. And then got into more like steady long-term work, um, selling phones and then selling the services. And what, it, what I have always done is focus on what it is that I'm learning at that time and whether or not it, it what I'm learning industry-wise and then whether or not I like what I'm doing or don't like what I'm doing. I don't stop doing it if I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I just take, take note of like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hire somebody to do that for me. You That's some, yeah. Which is a little bit about what we talked about in the class uh, with Strength Finders, yep. which is a, a book that all of you should at least be aware of, Strength Finders, and some of you are aware of it already. Um, so that's interesting to me. Um, first, why don't we start with you got a college degree yep. from Biola. Biola. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. And then you went off, did some work in Boston, I think. Yep. Came back, started your own business. Yep. And failed. 100%. What did, what did that teach you or what did that do to you? Um, okay, so I came back, from, came back from Boston. I didn't have much of a network. I'm not from Southern California. I'm from Northern California. Mm. So I didn't have like friends or family that were out looking for a job for me. Anybody who's graduating, I'd recommend cleaning up your resume, proofread it 10 times, give it to 10 people, have them proofread it 10 times, and then blast it out to the whole entire world. You will leverage your network much better than I was. My network was down a dirt road in Northern California, and my dad's not in business. It wasn't going to help me at all. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine in college hooked me up with his dad starting a new business, and uh, there were so many things wrong with it. If I was older and smarter, I would not have taken that job. So somebody else was starting a new business. Uh, they were starting a new division of a, a business. Division of yeah, a business. and it, it was an accounting firm, and it was an accounting process. Hmm. So I was 22 years old, talking to accountants who are not risk takers, about how to better categorize stuff, blah 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 blah, and they're like, "You are so young." you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and they were 100% right. But what I was selling was real and it was awesome. I ultimately, out of like my six months of doing that job, I got one customer, um, a company called Pacific Dental, who's huge now. Mm -hmm. And I think I got two commission checks out of it. But it was not super fun. And my recommendation, if I was to go back and talk to myself at that age, is go be like a cog in a wheel and you'll get to like see how everything works. People will say like, hey, Bill Gates didn't go to college. Mark Zuckerberg didn't go to college. Do you know what college Mark Zuckerberg was at when he didn't go to college? He was at Harvard. I'm not a Harvard guy. I needed to go to every minute of college that I went to and probably even extra college. And then I needed to go into an environment where I could learn business skills. And then, you know, at 39, yeah. I actually have a little bit of knowledge and some skills and can run my own business. I feel bad about that sometimes myself. That why am I not Mark Zuckerberg? Right. But you know what? I ask myself that. I'm not Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. You and know? I'm not. And and sometimes that's okay. That is if you're okay. Not Mark Zuckerberg, it's okay. Go to college. Go to college. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Study right. hard. Right. They'll teach you stuff. And then you'll go out and use it. Yep. Okay, so you mentioned that when you came back from Boston you had no network. But um, that's not your current state right now. Now you no. have uh, probably a really strong network. So how did you go about, or how would you recommend uh, people in this room build a network for Perfect. themselves? Perfect. Great question. You are good at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, on tape. That's yeah. I'm right. <laughs> Show your wife. <laughs> um, I'm gonna write that in my journal. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Um, a couple of different ways, and uh, one of the things that I would recommend to anybody like in the graduating class, I should have said this in class as opposed to everybody here, but um, there's a website, there's a group called Network After Work, and I feel like it's, 
meeting something, meeting.com, network after work. If you Google network after work, you'll come up with a website for sure. And it is primarily younger folks and people that are looking to sell stuff, help each other out, push and pull, mm -hmm. referrals and favors. So I would start there because it'll just give you, it'll give you good practice. And the great thing about networking is that like, you're probably, unless you try, you're not gonna see those people again. I mean, this is not as big as Orange County, but it's just practice. And I'm still practicing my networking. I go to that on occasion. I need to create some more margin in my life so that I have time to do it again. But I would highly recommend that to anybody like looking for their first job. Network after work is a great one. Hmm. And there's probably a bunch of other ones. That's just one of the ones that I know. Um, that's where I would start. Okay, so that's kind of a tactical thing, a group that you could start with. Right. What about principles of networking? Are there some <clears throat> overarching rules of thumb for, for building a stronger network? Hmm. Uh, I would say, wow, building a stronger network. Started with the easy questions, huh? <laughs> um, you can pass. No, I'm not going to pass. I've got more. Yeah, I know you do. Uh, building a stronger network. So I would say <sighs> spend time with your network. So the folks that, it, that your, if your dad's friend is in the industry that you want to be in, take that guy out to lunch or coffee, right? So build into those relationships, those key relationships that are around. Um, you know, we would love to say like, we're all equal and treat everybody the same, blah, blah, blah. And what is, what I would say is that you treat everybody well, you treat them with respect and love and all those sorts of things, but you treat people differently based upon how much, how much you want them in your life, how much value they bring, how much value you bring them. So treat people differently based upon what you want that relationship to be like. Good. Okay. Yes. So can I add, um, we've said this before, but we like saying it, saying things over and over again. Perfect. Um, first, uh, don't be, be fearless. Don't be afraid of reaching out to that person that your dad knows. hundred percent. I think, I think there's a lot of fear in talking to strangers. You know, we're, we're told as a kid not to talk to strangers and that carries over. You got to stop. Wrong. Eventually you have to start talking to strangers. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. So the second thing that I would say is play the student card. If you're a college student and you call somebody or want to meet with somebody, just tell them I'm a college student and have some puppy dog eyes kind of going and they will meet with you more likely than not. That's 100% true. Right? Yeah. Because I met with like the SVP. My brother was doing construction at like some multimillionaire's house. SVP of HR for Pfizer. Mm. Huge medical company, pharmaceutical company. And like the guy like just had pity on my brother. He's like, hey, my brother wants to get into pharmaceuticals. Would you meet with him? He's like, yeah, 630. I drove, <laughs> drove my butt down there. And show up. Yeah, show up. That's the third rule. It is. Show up. Oh, nice. I love showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like half, half of success is showing up. So can I, I'll use you as evidence. I would highly recommend being fearless though. Get out there. I talk to lots of people. It's kind of how God made me. Um, I talk to people all sorts of places that- All day long. Yep. I talk to people all day long. And then I also talk to people all sorts of places, grocery store lines, blah, blah, blah. I don't, can't track any deals back to that yet, but it puts a smile on my face. So keeps me entertained. Um, so I'm going to use you as evidence with, with the point of that student, use the, play the student card. Uh, the fact is, is that you're a busy person. I am. And you own a business and you drove here from Orange County. Puppy dog. Tears. Yeah. He and was crying, all I had to do begging. was say, students could learn something yeah. from your life. Yeah. And you were here. Yeah. You're here now. He was begging, and then he grabbed onto my leg when I tried to leave. But that's kind of the story, his side. We won't mention that I yeah. bit you. Though. Yeah, that is. <laughs> so, but it, it works if you play the student card, because people like you want to be generous, want to help. Yeah, 100%. Like you. 
people like you want to help students, uh, that makes you feel good. So I always, I always say um, in my marketing class, people buy for two reasons: to solve a problem, and for good feelings. You're here because of good feelings, because yes. helping other people makes you feel good. So play the student card, and the value that you're giving to someone else is you're making them feel good about their own generosity. And that's OK. That's OK. Cash in those chips. Cash them in early, too. Start with like your dad's guy who's the richest, and then the second richest, and the third richest, or is in the best industry, or you know, tried out the industry that you're in, right? Don't save that for the last, save, go to it first. Because mm -hmm. he's like, oh yeah, my, my buddy, Barry, he's got an opening and they would love to have you. Mm -hmm. Would you like a job? And you're like, yeah, that's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> Give me a job. So, so yes. <laughs> I think you destroyed my third principle, um, which is- Ask the, nicely. Well, <laughs> my third principle was seek, seek to give before you sure. ask for yeah. something. So seek to, to add value before you ask for value. And sometimes that's really hard. But even the value of making someone feel good by saying, do you think you could help me um, figure out my life a little bit? That, just making them feel good that way is uh, valuable. As opposed to, I want a job, can you give me a job? Don't, don't start there. Don't open with that. Flirt with them a little first. Right. Warm them up. <laughs> Warm them up. Less, less appropriate if it's your dad's friend, but <laughs> it's a joke. I'm okay. a part-time comedian. We'll cut that out. That's, That's fine. Is, Edit it out. Yeah, this yeah. is not live. So. Yeah. Um, so Dustin, you are in sales. I am in sales, yes. And we just spent 90 minutes talking about strengths. Is sales part of your strengths, do you think? Yeah, so my top strengths are Woo, which is called uh, stands for winning others over, so that is selling. Competition, so I love to win. I hate to lose. God, I hate losing. And then communication, which is being able to convey ideas to people okay, so and new people. My question is, there are people in this room who have similar strengths. Yeah, you should go and, be sales reps. And selling will will come naturally yeah. to those people. Um, Christian. So perfect. So selling will come naturally to those, but there are other people in this room where that is not their strength. They're afraid of. They don't even like the word sell or yeah. sales, and they don't identify themselves. They don't want anything to do with it. Can you make an argument that everyone needs to learn to sell? Yeah. Okay. I can make it right now. Even even the people who aren't don't feel like that's their strength. Hit us. Okay, so one, you do not have to become a full-time sales rep to be in sales. Every single person on the face of the planet is in sales. Hmm. Your, that. your doctor is in sales. You come in and they're like, hey, you've got XYZ. You need to take this once a day. He is selling you on taking this little pill to fix XYZ problem once a day. And they've done studies and the doctors that like um, have the least amount of malpractice issues are the ones that are most liked, not the ones that are necessarily the best doctors or went to the best schools. Say so that we're, again. sure. The doctors that get sued the least are not the doctors that went to the best schools or are the best doctors necessarily. They are the ones that are the most personable. Hmm. So Everybody's in sales. It is the oldest profession. It doesn't matter if you were making and selling clubs back in the day and just grunting and trading acorns. <laughs> you had to sell that club for some tangible thing way back in the day. It's the oldest, it's the oldest industry. And you don't have to do it full time. But literally, we were hanging out with my nieces in Washington over the weekend. You gotta sell them to eat their dinner. Mm -hmm. Keep kids alive. Sell. Keep kids alive. Yeah. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. That's a t-shirt idea. Yeah. Ideas just came right in from here to there. You heard it here first. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I want a copy of this video. Okay, so where's Steven? Is Steven here? So that's your next t-shirt. Okay. T-shirt, yep. Very good. So Steven's, Steven has an apparel company. Yes. Okay. T-shirts primarily. So um, 
I'm going to ask one more question before I open it up to questions from them. Uh, but I started out this conversation by kind of describing that you live what some of us might think of as sort of an ideal um, professional life, where you get you control your schedule, yeah. um, you make enough uh, money to pay your bills and then some, and have some fun. Uh, that would be ideal for lots of us. Are you finished? Um, am I finished with my life? I mean, <laughs> is this the last conversation? Yeah. <laughs> Meaning that video will become way more valuable. You, you had a path from here, from here to there, mm. to get to where you are now. Yeah. So what I want to know is, is everything perfect and rosy, or do you continue so perfect. to? Perfect. <laughs> Every day. You really just smashed my whole question. There. <laughs> okay, keep going. Is it perfect and rosy? Is, is it perfect? No. Uh, okay. So yeah. Talk about so it. talk about it not being perfect and rosy. Do you want to re rephrase that I'm really good at this? Yeah. No, you're really good at <laughs> Take it. Take that back. Or? No, I was just making fun of your question, <laughs> which I'm allowed to do. Yep. yep. Makes me feel good. That's so, um, yeah, uh, I think. W being almost 40, life has become like buckets. So like I've got marriage bucket, which is more important than work bucket. And like if that's going well, then like things are good. And then work bucket, and then you've got friends and all of your nonprofit or extracurricular activities. I work with the Congo and a missionary in, out of in uh, Cambridge uh, a lot. And so um, every day is not awesome. Before I got here, it let's next, see. Next t-shirt. Yeah, every day is not awesome. So let me tell, let's, let's take a little peek behind the, the curtain. It is awesome. It's very awesome. I make infinitely more money than I ever thought I would make. I was like, when I was in college, I was like, am I ever going to make six figures? And I make plenty of six figures. <laughs> So, uh, um, and I made six figures when I was like 25. So I was like, wow, one of my dreams is accomplished at 25, right? And one of my other dreams was to drive a, a Honda Accord within five years of when it was manufactured. Check that off the box as well. I am killing it over here. Uh, so work is awesome. I can take off two weeks and go to the Congo, help out my group over there. It's called Africa New Day. They do amazing work. Uh, I leave it to my office of six people. We've got really two core people that have been with me about three years that really head up and carry the weight when I'm gone. Um, I get to drive around and talk to people about technology, which is kind of cool. It's not super cool. Congo's better, but I don't, I don't hate my job. So work is pretty awesome. But like literally today, so we're not talking about yesterday or some fictitious time in the past. Um, OK, so it started yesterday. I'm working on this deal for 15 months called MCCN. The CEO, COO, CFO, which when you have one person that does all of those jobs at a big company, that makes it a mess automatically. And then this guy is a weirdo. <laughs> <sighs> so we find out yesterday that like I'm losing this deal that I've been working on for 15 months. And I'm like pulling my hair out. Last night, I can't concentrate. I ultimately went to Costco. And I was like, I will deal with this tomorrow. I sent myself a reminder for this morning. I pick it back up. I am now like guns a blazing doing everything I can to do everything I can do to save this deal, but I might lose it and it's a couple thousand dollars a month and that is just my life. Okay. Good. So some days some days suck. So, so I think we've got a lot of t shirt ideas. I've got in addition in addition to the two that we are I've got I make plenty of six finger figures. Yep. And this guy is a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. With a thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This guy. Is a it, yeah. This guy. Do you guys have he's any a weirdo. questions before we wrap it up, Christian? What do you do? Are you selling businesses or customers? <laughs> businesses exclusively. Okay. So B two B. Yep. B two B, and those are like wildly different sales. 
I would have, although, if you would have talked to me 20 years ago, I would have said, oh, if you sell to business people, you just have to be logical, right? A plus B equals C. And you're like, no, that is not it at all. One of the biggest deals that I sold, and this is the biggest deal that I sold five years ago, was to a company called First, First American. It's a like 10,000 person company. They literally bought a phone system from me. This small little division bought a phone system from me because the guy who runs this division knew that he was going to be moving onto campus with everybody else with a different phone system. He just wanted to let everybody know that he would buck the system. And that was like a $250,000 decision that he made just because. Based on emotions. Emotions, his own psyche. He wasn't hugged enough as a child. <laughs> I have no idea what happened, but yeah, something, something around that. Yeah. There's another thumb t-shirt. He yeah. wasn't hugged enough as a child. Yeah. <laughs> that is another t-shirt idea. Any other questions? None? Yes, Christian. <laughs> yeah. So you said you sell phones. I do. So I actually, uh, I used to sell the hardware of phones, and I'm not noticing any in this room, but uh, businesses and organizations like desk phones that you'll see at companies. And uh, I pivoted my career. So that was all one-time money. So you sell a system, you install it, 60, 90 days later you get a big paycheck. It's awesome. It's really cool. Instant gratification. Who doesn't love that? Um, I to your point of, so I worked a lot, especially in the middle years. I still work a lot. I'm always like two years away from working less. It's like, in two years, I'm gonna work less. But I've been saying that for five years, so <laughs> I'm not sure when that, it's like perpetually two years the away math, from, yeah. Math doesn't work. It anymore. doesn't, no. Um, so I was selling hardware and doing well. I had a full-time gig with them and was, uh, close to plan, which is like 100% of what you're supposed to sell in a year, or at plan for probably three to five years. And at that point, I started to focus on my side gig, which now has become my full-time gig. And that's all reoccurring revenue. So if you pay, if a company pays a phone bill for $1,000, I get $100 a month off of that. Does that make sense? So I changed changed businesses, but I worked two mostly full-time jobs there in the middle, ramping up this side so that I could get out of this side. And then now we have, we're blessed with six employees just as of this year. We had two before that. And we hit our numbers in May, June, or July this year, our goal numbers. So we have quota numbers, goal numbers, and then stretch goal. And then I don't know what the next one is. Hopefully we'll have to talk about that next year. but. We had our quota like in March and then our goal in May or June, and we're trying to hit our next milestone. Everybody gets bonuses off of that. We're like a, I'm a sales guy, so we're a very like results oriented business. Even though Johnny does quotes and then does smaller sales, um, and then Carla does project management, so she needs to get it installed for me to get paid. And then we do account management, which keeps people around as opposed to just being around for three, three years and leaving us. I want them to stay around for 10 years so that we can continue to build this thing. Dustin, and, thank you very much. My pleasure. We've got to get classes going. Yeah. I really appreciate your generosity, not, not only with the seniors, but here and all the t-shirt ideas that you gave to Steven. Yeah. Is, uh, also very generous. So. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys.